In this short video, we'll take a look at the composite view introduced in Clues version 3.2. I believe you're going to find this new view a valuable tool in analyzing your data in Clues. A new button has been added to the Clues toolbar, appearing to the right of the Find and Filter items. This button will toggle you back and forth between the original grid format and the new composite view. In fact, since the same record will remain selected in the other view, it is easy and fast to jump back and forth between the grid and composite views. The composite view gets its name from bringing together all of the records that are linked to each other. These records are then displayed in a single tree-like structure for easy viewing. When you first see the composite view, it will be showing all the records associated with the data category you selected in the explorer bar, the same as what would be displayed on the grid. This is what I will refer to as the top level of the data. Notice that the data shown in the various columns has been consolidated for easier viewing. Surname and given names are shown together, as are the vital dates. The sorting of rows in the composite view is controlled by clicking on the various column headers, similar to the grid. The current sort order is indicated by the small up or down arrow. However, in the composite view, only one column can be sorted at a time. Since the columns in the composite view have consolidated information, the sorting of each is preset within clues to give the most commonly desired result. For example, when I click on the surname given name column, the sorting is first by the surname, then the given name, and then birth year. Sorting with the Vital Dates column is by birth year, then marriage year, then death year. On the left side of the composite view area are small expansion buttons showing a little plus or minus sign. If a plus sign is showing, it means the data can be expanded on this item. If no icon appears, nothing is linked to that record. Let's click on a plus sign to expand the data. We have people records as the top level at the moment, so any documents, images, or research log items that are linked to that person will now be listed. Click the minus sign to collapse the data rows. Note that double clicking anywhere on a row will also perform the expansion or collapse function. Notice on the header row that a second line of descriptions appear in parentheses. This is what applies to the first expanded level of information. In our case, the documents, images, or research log items now appearing. The headers will only show the descriptors for the top level records and the first expanded group of records. You should be able to recognize what the data are as you expand down deeper into the hierarchical structure. So if we expand down deeper for a particular document, we now see what other people and businesses are linked to that document. This technique can be used to identify relationships between people that you otherwise had forgotten about. We can keep expanding down but Clues will stop providing the expansion buttons after five levels of information. There are cases, however, when digging deeper gains you little information. If a person is linked to only one document, and that document is only linked to that person, digging deeper just keeps showing the same recurring records. It's going to be up to you to recognize those situations where you seem to be in a loop. Just stop digging further. As I mentioned earlier, the composite view generally follows a pattern of expanding out all of the records that are linked to the one you are looking at. 
As we saw in the earlier examples, for people in business records, expanding them will show documents, buildings, images, and research log items they are linked to. When a row is an image, research log, or document type, including all of the censuses, any linked people or businesses will be expanded in the next level. When a row is a source record, documents, buildings, images, and research log items linked to it will be expanded. Finally, when a row is a repository, sources and research log items will be shown when expanded. In some cases, you could be seeing a mix of documents, images, and research log items all in the same group of expanded rows. The images will have either a map or photo designation in the second column, and research log items will show a research designation to identify these different kinds of data. You will see that the find and filter functions work on the composite view the same way as they did on the grid. However, only in relation to the top level information and not any expanded data rows. Likewise, the various edit, delete, merge, and clone functions also work on the composite view top level rows similar to the way they work on the grid. If you choose to display alternate IDs or IDs from external databases, they will appear as additional columns on the right side of the composite view. Well, I believe we've covered most of the main points regarding this new way of presenting information in clues. You will probably find the composite view to be one of those tools you latch on to and can't understand how you have ever worked productively without it. Before I close, I'll make a quick mention of a new feature in the options form under the new censuses tab. It gives the ability to control which censuses appear in the explore bar. You can now hide any explore bar census you don't use in your research so that you have a cleaner display. That's all for now. Be sure to view the other videos that explore the various features of clues. Thanks for watching.